Let's equate Kia's success in India to a musical artist. Their first album was the Cell Toss and it was a smash hit to the point where you heard the metaphorical songs on TikTok reels all the time and even Bacha did a remix on it. The second album was something for the music connoisseur. It was more premium. It was a new sound that they tried. Of course, it was the carnival. The third one was again a big commercial smash. The sonnet. And now, Kia has tasted success. He doesn't want to do something niche. It wants to do something mass market all the time. It wants to make a big dent in the auto industry. And this is Kia's fourth album. One that has all the makings of a billboard number one. But is it just going to be banking on the Kia name to do that? Or is this car ends a package that's worth buying? First things first, let me tell you how large this car is. At over 4.5 meters, it's only about 200 mm shorter than the mighty Innova. But here is the interesting thing. It's actually got a longer wheelbase than the Innova. Okay, yes, on the whole, it doesn't have the outright SUV stance that every Indian buyer digs. And the 16-inch wheels just don't cut it for me. But I kind of like the way it looks. It looks more easy on the eyes like the girl next door. If you guys have seen me long enough on the Powerdrift channel, you know I always harp about something that stands out, some detail, some little trinket. And in this car, it's not a little detail, it's the whole front end. I think this almost looks like it belongs on a show floor. It's like a concept that just sort of rolled off and made to production without any changes. It looks really, really modern. The number of angles and curves and bits that you could actually sit and stare at the whole day are tremendous. I particularly like this whole sort of diamond thing that they've got going on in the grill and the fact that it almost looks like it's an EV, grill-less. They call it the digital tiger nose grill or whatever parlance they call it. I just like the way it looks because it looks modern, it looks fresh, it looks new. And it has a nice rear end too, enough to make a fair few people stop and stare, but not in a bad way. But yes, I can't say this enough though, it just looks so underwheeled and undertired. Put in a set of 18 inch wheels or probably even 17s and definitely not something with this very overused black and diamond cut finish and it will transform the car. I guarantee it. Our SUV engines undergo a lot of stress both in city driving and on tough terrains, particularly during warm-up, in stop-start traffic and of course while carrying heavy loads. Ordinary car oils may not be enough for your SUV and that is why we recommend fully synthetic Castrol Magnetic SUV for superior protection. Here's what I think. A cool looking exterior alone doesn't cut it anymore. What you need also is really cool interior design. Because look, everybody gives you all the bells and whistles and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and cool seats and a sunroof, etc. But a cool design will always be cool. And one that is done with sensibilities and done to a point where it doesn't look really bad in say five years time is even cooler. And that's what this is. Now this is of course a very high-end variant. So you've got the digital instrument cluster which is a rather crisp and nice unit and it changes color when you change driving modes we put a little shot of that here and you've got that big screen which has really really nice and cool looking neon like um, icons in it of course you've got apple carplay and android auto as i already mentioned but then you've got all these design bits everywhere like these little angular line these squiggles on the dashboard or the fact 
that this car has a blue top and a beige combination and I like that. I like a brave interior to a point where it makes you want to actually go and see that car in the showroom. People are going to want and come and see this. People are going to want and see how this looks in real life because in real life it looks so much more nicer, it looks so much more luxurious than what it looks in pictures. In fact, pictures don't even seem to capture it that much. Overall, I think Kia has absolutely killed it here. Specs on point, interior design on point, the seats are nice and comfortable. Yes, it might not feel like a big SUV because you're sitting a little bit higher up than you normally would. But on the whole, this is a very, very cool place to be. And you know those little points I always say, like the one we just discussed on the outside? Have a look at this. This is a little slot that Kia has given where you can plug in that little air freshener or ambipure or whatever you want to call it so that it doesn't really intrude on your AC vents. That is thoughtful design. You know what I'd do? I'd put like a phone holder there for my co-passenger to have their phone on. But again, thoughtfulness, that's what matters. And this is a thoughtful interior. Now a lot of people have asked me how much space is in the back of the car and then of course at the launch a few weeks ago we couldn't actually get in the car this is the first time i'm sitting in the back seat and considering the fact that this is the longest wheelbase in its class this is a lot of space so on that front you are pretty much spot on you're pretty much comfortable everywhere let's talk about all the features you get though now i have just counted all the usb slots in this car and there are six seats six usb slots people at the back here get their own ac vents which sort of shut and open if you like it and uh, it's an interesting thing because it does have a sunroof so how they vented the air through the roof is a bit of an engineering marvel but not something i'd like to go into detail about because that's of course only if you are really anal about these small little details so what else does it get well you get this table here which is quite nifty and it's quite solid it does make a bit of a clattering when you put it back down but this little net thing, is it for a watch to put in? I mean, it's going to scratch up the plastic if you put your metal watch in, so probably not. You do have the air purifier at the back here. And then this left side seat gets a little button where you can electronically, well, if you put the headrest down, you can press this and it electronically folds away. So you don't have to take the effort of moving a lever. Interesting. And now I'm going to try and make a bit of a fool of myself by trying to get into that back seat. Will my fat ass fit in there? Well, it doesn't hurt to try, does it? I fit. Now that's something I wasn't expecting here. This comes as quite a surprise. And you know what, it's comfortable as well. I mean, yes, the seat angle is lovely and reclined. And there's headroom. This is a bit of a revelation. And of course, if you want to get out, little button and off you go. Or you can lounge a little bit as well. Now look, the Karen isn't going to be something absolutely revolutionary to drive because of course we have driven these engines before in the Seltos and this platform, which is also from the Seltos, this in fact is a Seltos with a different top hat on it, although this is a little bit longer. So yes, in terms of the way it drives and handles, there's a bit of a difference, but we'll get to that. Engine options first, turbo petrol, which is this, of course with the dual clutch automatic, and you have the normal naturally aspirated petrol with the manual option. You also have the diesel and that's a great thing because some of the rivals don't have that diesel anymore so this will fill that gap but let's talk about this turbo petrol because that's an option that a lot of people buy and a lot of people really seem to enjoy i'm one of those people who seems to enjoy because this engine is capable i know what it can do once you really push it yes it does get a little bit thirsty if you push it really really hard but if you just drive it normally 
it does reward you and this has driving modes too which makes the car just a little bit sharper and nicer to drive now this is physically a bigger car as compared to the seltos and that makes it slightly heavier and that is noticeable when you try and throw this around a corner yes sure for most people you will never push it to the extreme and you shouldn't either because i don't think it likes it that much sudden changes in the lane do tend to show that softer sprung nature of this car but on the flip side it is quite comfortable it's not soft or floppy it still has that inherent confidence it's just the way you would want a people carrier to be set up and i'm guessing it's actually even better with a full load of 6 in the car and now the diesel Now I was trying to think about when the last time I drove a diesel manual was, and honestly, it's been a minute. And that wasn't a people carrier like this thing is. It was something a little more specialized in a more specialized environment. Nonetheless, that's digressing. This is going to fill that gap, like I talked about earlier, because there aren't really any rivals in the MPV esque, SUV esque segment, which offers a diesel engine. in what we think will be this price point any more of course there are the SUVs but this sort of 6 seater or 7 seater combination there isn't much around now this of course is the diesel manual personally with an engine like this which of course again is tried and tested and we know it works better with an automatic gearbox i just have the automatic and yes this does come from somebody who you guys no is an enthusiast and if you're wondering what the fuel economy figure of the diesel is or of the petrol for that matter here is a quick chart that you should screenshot and share with all your buddies and yes i haven't forgotten the safety bit so don't go typing all mad in the comments just yet okay It does get 6 airbags on all variants and other features like ESC and hill descent control in both the variants that we drove and I'm going to be extremely critical now of Kia and say this on the record Dear Kia you guys need to prove once and for all that your cars are as safe as some of its rivals by sending it to Global NCAP and ensuring that they crash the daylights out of it If not added sales at least it will put the memes to end once and for all Right okay let's wrap this up like a burrito this is a damn good package and it has everything going for it as a winner it is a winner in fact it's got some 7500 or more bookings in the first 24 hours and that just shows how much people love the kia badge it of course all depends on how they price it and there is a lovely gap between the sonnet and the seltos where this will feel right at home but just imagine imagine if they price this at the price of the sonnet or even lower well it's unlikely but imagine the runaway train of success that it could become in that case but let's wait and watch and yes there will be a lot more videos on the currents a lot lot more coming soon thank you for watching power drift stay tuned for a lot more